Blessed good morning to all of you. Please all rise as we start our service today. But before we do so, kindly take time to say good morning to everyone. Amen. Morning to all. Amen. Let's uh, uh, make this as a regular habit. Today is also our Lord's Supper. So let us prepare our hearts for communion. Please pray with me. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us to your house today in the first Sunday of the month of June. Lord, you have led us through May, and there is no doubt that you will lead us this month. Only grant us the faith to believe. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Remain standing, please. Kate, our worship minister, will lead us. Church, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Let us join our voices as we lift up our praises to God, who is faithful in showing us His mercy and grace. We don't. 
continue to praise you and before you, the great high priest whose name is love. We bow in adoration and reverence for purchasing us with the most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong and perfect belief. to 
six months of the month or the year of 2024 is gone and we enter into the sixth month every time we enter the month of june the world calls it a pride month i think it's a brokenness month where we are invited not to be proud but to humble ourselves before the lord why we are totally clueless what will happen the next six months and therefore at this point from january up to june Think of the goodness of the Lord. He spared us. He supplied our needs. He corrected us. He walked with us. Let us offer a clap of praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise you, Jesus. And now join me as we give thanks. Lord, thank you for the things you allowed. There were many things you allowed that we don't like, but nonetheless, it was good for our soul. Thank you for the things that you gave us and truly made us joyful, the blessings of friends, family, the blessings of health, which is very, very temporary, coming to church today so we can worship, the blessing of realization, the blessing of repentance, the blessing of chance and change, we give you praise. So this morning, Lord, as we look towards the communion, though the wafer will not become the real body of Christ and the uh, Jews will not become the real blood of Christ. They are very, very significant in our Christian faith because they remind us that it's all about you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Christ, we humbly pray. Amen. Amen. Please all be seated. Moments from now, Pastor Jerry will lead us in prayer in behalf of those who need prayer. You know, there are times that you need to be embarrassed. There are times that you need to be conscious but when you ask for prayer, that's not the time to be conscious. It's time to be vulnerable. It's time to be honest. And uh, I, I rejoice when people boldly, without inhibition, stand when the pastors say, who among you this morning came to church with a heavy heart? Life is not really good and full of stress, challenges, and you want to be prayed for, will you stand if you are that person? By standing, you're saying, that's me. Life is difficult. Pastor, grabe akong ginagian. And uh, Lord, have mercy. Business is bad. And children, family is not really good. Oh, I need God's direction. Please, uh, avail of the privilege to be prayed for. Yes, the ayogid mong maulaw kay one way or the other. God knows it already before you even identify. It's for us to be humbled before the Lord. I always stand at this point, so many things to be prayed for. Pastor Jerry, Dr. Mulato will come and lead us in prayer and all our hearts, we agree. Those of you who are not standing, pray for those who are standing. We join our hearts in prayer before the Lord, our Father, most gracious and kind, Lord, we call upon your name. Hear our prayers as we lift up to you our burdens. Help us to do it, Holy Spirit, in faith, so that even as we pray, we will receive your peace. Oh Lord, we begin with our emotional and mental stresses. Oh God, material and physical needs are a concern, but sometimes, Lord, the stress in the heart and the mind proved to be more challenging to handle. Among us al elderly who are coping with the reality of a weakening body, oh Lord, coping with all sorts of sickness, and on top of that, Lord, the emotional struggle with loneliness perhaps, the fear of the future, 
the fear of being alone. Lord, assure us that even in our old age, you are our companion who will never leave us nor forsake us. Among us are the young, physically strong, but deep inside the young heart, Marami na ring scars, Panginoon, may mga emotional pain leading to self-doubt or self-pity, the pressure to belong, they feel confused amidst, Panginoon, ng technology na sa Facebook, ang dami naming kaibigan, but we wonder whether we have really learned intimacy better than others. Lord, be our comfort, be the guide of these young people. Protect their faith in you. And if somehow they're going astray, we pray for our children. Lord, keep them close to you. We are limited as parents in protecting and guiding them. And then we pray for ourselves as parents, especially among us who are struggling in our relationship with our children. God, help us. We have heard from this pulpit that perhaps we have to change our prayer Also, from asking you to guide our children to help us parents to become more gracious and reflect more of your kindness and wisdom. For those who are sick among us, we pray for healing. Lord, either by medicine or by miracle, we acknowledge you that you are the healer. Lord, provide for the continuing need of Maintenance medicine for those who have to go through tough medical procedures. God, we call upon you. Relieve us, Lord, from the pain uh, of being, in, being sick and yet missing your message for us. Oh, Lord, help us even in the time of sickness to be attentive to your voice. Perhaps to the lessons that you are teaching us. Through our situation, we lift up to you those who are grieving, like Sila Kuya Mike and the whole family. Si Zakaria and Joshua, we lift them up to you. Embrace them, comfort them. Life will never be the same again because they lost a mom, a wife. Oh God, help and walk with them, oh Lord. We pray for those who are needing financial uh, resources, for the jobless, guide them to the right job. For those who are struggling with their job, supply the strength for decisions we need to make, wisdom that comes from you. We need your spiritual joy. We need your spiritual peace to rule our hearts and our mind. Therefore, we cast our burdens upon you and trust your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please all be seated. What a joy when we are prayed for. The next item is that if you know someone, nakay nahibal and someone suffering, I know you know someone. You know why God allow you to know the situation of other people, not only to be informed but for you to pray. And then I have a lot in my mind. Yesterday I prayed for someone who is sick. It affected me so well because I, I, you know, I've been through this journey with them. And then kahapon we were in the funeral of. Zarly, Zarly and Mike is uh, attending our church ever since the church was still Kahoy and they, the children are still small. Now they are engineers and architects, but at the age 60, Zarly was taken home. Masakit din, ano? Mike is uh, in pain and we were there last night in the, in the funeral. And from January to June, I was telling the pastors Aghan ba yaka yung funeral? Ay, grabe. I, in a week, we are so drained. But again, that is life. And a reminder that life is short, but God remains to be good. So if you have someone in mind to pray for, listen to the Holy Spirit because we will be praying for them. Dili, mawala sa kona ko na yesterday, coming to church, a parent met me and showed me his, her a mother, her teenage girl, Uh, she is undergoing dialysis and my heart was just pero her name never departs in my mind and we will, I will really pray Ganon, if the Lord stirs your heart to prayer be obedient because perhaps that's the only hope that remains no? sa mga inampuan nato and uh, what will you pray? 
What will you pray? I want you to read this passage with me three times. And on this basis, this is the thing we will ask from God, okay? Let us read Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. And we will do that uh, three times. Let us read the first reading all together. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body... You are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Second reading. For let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. The third reading. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. You know, that, that's not just a verse. That is something we need to ask God. Amen? Number one, if you are praying for someone, pray for the peace of Christ to rule that heart. Amen? Of course, pray for healing, pray for solution of problem, pero labaw ni Ana ang kalinaw ni Kristo. Amen? And that's also, need, kailangan din natin yun, ano? The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And number two, there's a Another verse there that says, live in peace. Can you show that? Live in peace. For as one member of the body, we should live in peace. So that second item is also critical. You know, I want to live at peace with all people. Are you with me? Amen? Amen. Ayoko yung may kaaway. Ayoko yung may kagalit. Kung pwede lang, palugi. Pero my dear brothers and sisters... You cannot live in peace unless you ask help from God. Because by nature, we are fighters, believe me. By nature, we are bitter and vindictive. To live in peace with a neighbor, to live in peace with in-laws, to live in peace with church folks, we must ask that from God. And number three, that is a tall order. Always be thankful. That, be good always, sometimes. Pero the word of God says always. So what do you do with that verse? Ask God. Make that a prayer request. Lord, I don't want to grow old a grumpy old man or a grumpy old woman. I want to grow old not toxic or sour, but a person who is grateful. You know, may I use the word magic just to emphasize a point? A heart full of gratitude lowers the blood pressure. Um, I'm not a doctor, but I think it's true. A heart always grateful cures insomnia. You know what else cures insomnia? My sermon. Your insomnia will be cured. A heart that is grateful, even, even scientists who don't believe in God recognize that there's an effect, and therefore it's not an accident. Will you stand for someone that you need to pray for? By standing, you're saying, it's not me, it's another person. Let us bring them to God in prayer. A friend, uh, oh God, there are so many. The girl I met yesterday undergoing dialysis. We need to pray. Maybe your son, your daughter, your family, a stranger. God impress that in your heart. You have to stand and pray for that person. Because one day, people will pray for you, even though they don't know you. I'll give you time to listen to the Holy Spirit. Maybe a church that needs prayer. Maybe, oh Lord, we lift up the names of the people we want to pray. The, the lady I met yesterday. The one who is undergoing dialysis. Father, the home that is threatened by divorce, Lord, the finances that are so impossible to bear, the confusion, where, what direction to take, and Lord, uh, the many suffering individual in our church and in our world, in our city, in our country. We pray that the peace of Christ will rule their heart. We pray that as your peace rule our hearts, help us to be peacemakers. As we grow old, allow us not to become hard to live with, but nice to live with peacemakers. Lord, 
We're angry people. We're bitter people. Just even in the grocery, falling in line or parking area, our anger bursts. God, ngayon taming tabang, we cannot live in peace if you don't deal with anger. And Lord, that last part, whatever situation we are in, open our spiritual eyes that we may see, we can still be thankful. We can still be thankful. Lord, hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Hear our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please all rise for the Gloria Patri. standing, I ask the church for a sincere, special prayer, because every year in the month of June, you know what is our event? Brokenness Gathering. It will start on June 11, but that's for pastors only, 10 a.m., and then for the members, June 12, 5.30 in the afternoon until 14. So this is my pray for me as I lead the service. It's difficult. We had a not so good experience every time we are gathered for brokenness to the point that we become fearful. So na put ang mahitabo. But I, I remind you, God is not honored when everything is well and yet we are proud. You know, we need that pride shattered. Please believe that. And only then we can experience encounter with the Lord. So, Consider that dates, block it in your calendar. It's impossible if you attend all. We will have a crisis in attendance. Only one night will be enough. If you attend 12, fine. If you attend 13, fine. If I hope God will not convict you to attend every service because na wa na ilingkuranan. Visitors from other places will be coming. Sambuanga, tawi tawi, ilo ilo. Let us pray. In this middle month, Lord, of June, we cannot rush to July. Para bang walang nangyari. We cannot just rush to the next six months as if you're not there. We, we, we take a break, three nights, to listen to the Holy Spirit, to submit our lives to you, to reconnect, to restore, to repair, to repent, to refresh. Oh God, we are totally clueless what's next. But we need those three nights, the pastors and the members, to be quiet before you and bravely ask what's going on inside. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Wow, I am excited on what the Lord will do in our brokenness gathering. It's a simple service. And, alam mo, why do we have that? For the whole congregation to pause your busy life, slow it down. Deliberately put a stop on whatever you can stop so you can listen to the Lord. That includes me. No? And try to look here. What's happening here? Ito talaga yun eh, what's happening here? You, you can look around, what's happening there, but we have to look inside. Kate will come and lead us in a song, an old song, in fact, this is our graduation song, grade 6. A lot of memories there. And as the song starts, as practice in our church, the altar is a place where people desperate for God kneel down and say, God, I bring something so heavy. If, if you are that person, come to the altar. Stay here two, three, four, five seconds or more. Pour out your heart to the Lord. You know, I like this time because wala na pastor, we all kneel before God, 
and say, God, have mercy. Maybe you have a need that only God can do. It's an old hymn. As the song starts, the altar is open for those led by the Lord to come and offer and ask help and bow down. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Altar is open to those who want to come. Husband and wife, kids, kneel before God. Step I take, my Savior goes before me, and with His loving hand, Amen. He leads the way, and with His breath, I whisper, I adore Thee, oh, I This morning, singing that song, always two people pops up in my memory. One, Mrs. Ellie Gonzaga, my grade three teacher. She was the one who led the choir. We were grade six, you know, noisy, naughty kids singing each step I take. Another one is the former Miriam Nasiunggayo, my teacher, also led us in that song. We sang that 1981 as graduate graduate namin, mag high school. And the fear at that time is algebra. I think that subject comes from the devil, no? That uh, algebra. Grabe. We hear a lot of this and that. algebra. And then fears are calm because each, each step. Step, not leap. Now I'm 55. Life is more than algebra. 
I have seen a lot of realities, but the song is still true. Give it a try. Just the first stanza one more time. Dili maglumpat sang taas each step we take. Amen? That's the way the Lord guide. First stanza only. Let's worship the Lord and trust God. No, whatever ginagian mo, Lord guide me. Just, just guide me today and another day tomorrow. Each step I take, my Savior goes before me, and with His love, Amen. He leads the way, and with His breath, I whisper, I adore Him. Amen. Oh, what joy! I know that He will guide me to higher ground. He ever leads me on until someday the lesson will be taken. Each step I take just leads me closer. I was in the funeral last night and Kuya Mike was saying God is a God of grace because Zarley, his dear wife, died at the age of 60. The last breath, the last step ushered her to her 60th birthday on earth and then the Lord took her home and then they were saying, paabot yung 60 kay nakadiscount sa bayaranan sa hospital. That's something, no? A little bit like, Lord, even in that last step, yeah? they paid like two million money in double doctors. That's, God is gracious. And the Lhasa family is okay. I think they handled it well. Let's pray. Let's continue to pray. Let's bow our heads. And baka may hindi pa kayo nasabi sa Diyos, would you like to continue to pray? Basig na pa kayo wala na sulti sa ginoo. Lord, help me this week. What a relief to know that you are our burden bearer. Thank you, Jesus. Now prepare us to listen to your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Please all rise for the reading of the scripture. Actually, the text should be Philippians 3, 1 to 11, but that's a long text. We can only handle Philippians 3, 1 and 2. So we will just read that for this morning. Please join me as we read together. Whatever happens, my dear brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. I never get tired of telling you these things, and I do it to safeguard your faith. Watch out for those dogs, those people who do evil, those mutilators who say you must be circumcised to be saved. This is the word of God, this is the word of life, and you will respond by saying, thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and Kate will lead us in one more song to prepare us God's word and then the service will conclude with Holy Communion.
to doubt that most of you, if not all of you, have found Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. All God's people say, Amen. However, I don't also want to speculate that everything is okay in your spiritual life. How do I know? Because while it is true that you and I, by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, become sons and daughters of God forever, no longer fearful to go to hell because God has saved us by faith in Christ. But if you are not aware, you cannot go to hell, but Satan can bring hell right where you are. And what is the meaning of that? It is so alarming, my dear brothers and sisters, a lot of people claim they are believers, but they lost their spiritual delight. No smile, no joy, no meaning. In fact, I honestly confess to you that the work of a pastor is very heavy. But without the joy of the Lord, who can handle this? My desire today that after we hear God's word and we partake communion, we don't partake communion like criminals sentenced to death, but rather with a smile, with joy, because we realize for the first time with the Holy Spirit open eyes, Jesus loves you very much. He knows about your past and your tantrums and your secrets. And yet, he baptizes us with delight, Kalipai. So the title of my message today is Spiritual Delight Always Centers on Jesus. That's a beautiful thought. Spiritual delight always centers on Jesus. In this journey of finding and enjoying spiritual delight, it is of utmost value that we remember one core truth. Christ is always the center of spiritual delight. Will you humbly accept that there are people who don't know Christ? It is. They say the four-letter words a lot. They don't believe the Bible. They are really, wow, what you call super wicked. But they are happy. How's that for a change? You think that the ungodly are not happy. No, they're so happy that they don't need Christ. You think they're not enjoying. No, they're enjoying good health. They're enjoying good life. They're enjoying the pleasures of sin. But that is not called spiritual delight. My dear friends, this morning, it is my utmost 
desire that you do not lose your spiritual delight. Amen? And how do you do that? I think the magic word or the key word for today's sermon is focus on Christ. Because when you drift here, when you drift here, you will not lose your salvation, but you will lose your joy. And therefore, hear the warning. The temptation to drift from the center and improvise through the flesh is real. Why do we drift? Because God is not in a hurry, and we are. That's the problem. God is not in a hurry, but I am. So therefore, like, like Abraham, Sarah, instead of looking at the center, how God will provide, they improvise. And then Hagar, you know the story. And many things in life, when we drift from Christ, it is no longer a journey towards spiritual delight. When the church drifts from Christ, it is no longer a journey to a spiritual delight. If you read the whole chapter of Philippians 3, 1 to 11, you will find the outline in this manner. Number one, Paul warns the Philippian believers not to drift from Christ. I will emphasize on first point, no? Pahinumduman ni Pablo ang mga magtutuo sa Filipos, ayaw mo gawa kang Kristo. God will not drift from you, but you drift from Him. Are you with me? He should be the focus, but sometimes the focus is now my problem. The focus is now my prosperity. A little drift here, a little drift there, you are in the wrong lane. And it's not the journey to spiritual delight. In this same chapter, Paul tells the Philippians to use the mind of Christ to discern well. Because this is the age of deception. Are you with me? Not everyone who sings our song, speaks our Bible, are truly Christ-centered. I'm not even talking of the cults. I'm talking of evangelical churches who have long away drifted from Christ. And that may include us. When we correct others, when we check something is wrong, we must not exclude ourselves. Amen? We must have the habit of always asking, Lord, what are you correcting in my life? And then the third, Paul shared his testimony of his personal encounter with Christ. Before I go further, I want to settle three important issues. Spiritual delight, when you say that, you have to believe that the source, Christ, is the only source of spiritual delight. Amen. Are you wanting healthy bodies? Of course. At the age 55 now, you, 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 I don't know, a lot of sickness, no? My family is diabetic and then they are merounding high blood. It's okay to have good health and I am so Proud and admiring of people who are very disciplined in what they eat. Like my son, Paul, is very disciplined in his running. He is my uh, torturer. So every morning, we run the crocodile farm, and he would say, Dad, you have to finish this. Dad, Dad, Dad. And I said, no, Paul, because when I'm walking, I'm praying. And my son said, shut up. It's not time to pray. It's time to walk. So now my kadang sa Starva, Strava, I, I don't know. He can monitor. And for siguro a month now, we, I've been in the crocodile farm every morning. And you would not notice me because I wear wig. <laughs> no, incognito. Wala eh. Alam ko'y kalo nga. Mara ko. Daghan kay ko kaila ba? Char. I go there. Hi, hi, hi. Ay, nako. So... Grabina, and then I would like to announce to you that your pastor is in a strict diet. Absolutely no rice. Wala na kanon kanon, no? Puro lang steak. No, no, no rice, no rice. Just uh, what the Americans call salad. Uh, some Caesar salad, you know? In Filipino, it's actually King Kong, no? In King Kong, and saloyo, that uh, so slippery in the throat. And then slippery somewhere else. I am changing my diet because health is important. Pero ang pangotana, this is the truth. Health will 
will one day fail. Ama ba na? No matter how you take care, no matter what vitamin you take, one day it will just say, done. The last step will be taken. I am not encouraging you to not to take care of your health, but I am warning you, good health is never the source of spiritual delight. Because one day you will get sick. What about those people we have in church, weekly dialysis, he, uh, battling with cancer? You, you say to me, they are no longer having spiritual delight because their bodies are no longer strong? No, 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 no. It's just happy family is important. But my dear friends, happy family is not the source of spiritual delight. Crisis. Crisis. Ama. Good marriage and wonderful marriage for years are nice, but not the source of spiritual delight, crisis. Christ is the source. Christ is the sustainer. Christ is the standard. And with this, Paul reminded the Philippian church, Paul knew that their conversion is legit. However, Paul wanted them, number one, to stay spiritually alert. That's the first point today. You have delight, and in this journey of putting Christ in the center, you cannot be caught off guard. Your enemy is not only the devil, your enemy is yourself. Are you with me? Your enemy is not only the temptation of sin, it is also the temptation of self-righteousness, which is worse. So Paul, out of his concern for the Philippian church, you already have the joy of the Lord, and Paul is saying, Please, 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 don't lose it. Because the devil wants to steal your joy. Nakaisa siya, no? You're, going, you're not going to hell, but on your way to heaven, it will be hell if you don't have the joy of the Lord. And believe me, I am not talking baloney here. I experience myself a severe spiritual dryness, and you still have to preach every Sunday. Nothing is so painful than that. So what I'm saying to you this morning, my dear brothers and sisters, before we partake the Holy Communion, we might as well say, God, give me back my joy. All God's people say. We might as well say, I am now watchful and on guard by the grace of God not to allow this joy to be robbed. Stay alert and stay firm, standing in your spiritual delight in Christ. And Paul is saying, Rejoice in the Lord. How many of you took that, take that word seriously? At first, I, I did not. Oh, rejoice, rejoice, may pagikas. Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. Ang daming problema in this country of ours. So many problems. Rejoice, rejoice. COVID is another, the, the, you know, that virus is along the way. How can you rejoice in the Lord? I did not take that seriously. And the Spirit of God invites me. And in the Spirit of God invites you. Those are not just motto. Those are not just statement. Those are ways of life. Rejoice in the Lord. You will be surprised with the verse. Please look at verse 3. Whatever happens, let's read, whatever happens, my dear brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. Are you, uh, will you believe me that we are all under the category of whatever happens because we have absolutely no clue what will happen tomorrow? Tama ba? You know, you visited the doctor for blood test and you came out with difficult. Whatever happens, a lot of possibilities there. Enough to rub your joy, enough to torture your life. But Paul said, my dear brothers, whatever happens, what is our response? Rejoice in the Lord. You know the meaning of that? Find your joy not in health. Find your joy not in family. Find your joy not in friends. Find your joy not in achievements. Find your joy in Christ. And only in the Lord there is joy. Life is so temporary. You know, my wife went to Mlang for one week, uh, almost, to take care of her mom. And I'm not... I'm not okay sleeping without her. I terribly miss her. And then I, the, the, the thought, the morbid thought of what if, what if, what if, what if. Believe me, those what ifs are real, but you are in the wrong direction. Kung ang imong kalipay, gikan sa imong asawa, gikan sa imong bana, gikan sa imong trabaho, 
your joy comes from your career, your, your joy comes from your being athletic, you miss it because Paul said, rejoice in the Lord. Let the Lord be the source of your joy. Amen. And then the others, as what doctors would say, supplements, secondary joy, the joy of friendship, the joy of being alive, the joy. Kanina, I rejoice with a woman by the name of Andrea. She has a, two babies. She's a single mother. She works hard, real hard, and uh, without a husband. That's why I am not so strict about mga sabaan nga bata, di na ako masuko. Kasi alang ninyo kadali. Uh, kay, sorry, madisturbong uban. Pero karon ni Kalman ako eh. Kay, the story of Andrea, calm, 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 silent L pala yan, ano? Calms, calms, calms me. Okay, nasa baby diri. She wants to hear God's word, but the baby is noisy, di ba? Uh, and then another one. And then this morning, came to me very excited. She said, Pastor, by the grace of God, I made it to the board exam. I am now a nurse. To God be the glory. <laughs> wow. And I want to say, that is joy. But that's not the source of spiritual delight. Because the next of passing the board exam as a nurse, welcome to joblessness. That's what I'm saying. It's not the source. But I don't want to rob her of that joy. Pray that she finds a job. If you know some opening, you will really help this single mother find a job. The source is Christ. Find your joy, here we go, in the Lord alone. And the, all of the rest are bonus. Okay, Bena? I'm not asking you not to enjoy a new house and lot. Uh, I'm not asking you to enjoy, not to enjoy a trip in Japan or blessing. These are all coming from a good, unreluctant God to bless. However, magbantay, stay alert. Your joy, your spiritual delight is only found in Christ. No wonder why. No wonder why I meet people who have no reason to be happy. They are sick, they're alone, and yet when you talk to them, they are spiritually full of delight. Maybe they found the secret. Their rejoice, their joy is found in the Lord alone. Amen. Now, how do you lose that joy? Don't lose your joy in the Lord by putting confidence in your strength. To those of you who are weak, that's a clear sign. But to those of you, you know, age is a brutal friend. Age tells you you're no longer strong. Aging is a beautiful but uh, painful process of telling you it's not the same anymore. Those people who are athletic, very athletic since birth, you have a hard time accepting it's not your strength because since day one, you thought it's your strength. You know, my son loves to have fun run and he's really a powerful basketball player. He loves uh, Kobe Bryant and he, he, he belonged to the Lakers Baptist Church. Loves basketball. I don't understand that. To explain to people that you are not strong when you are strong is a struggle. No wonder why. Listen to me. I have this weird idea. That's why God allows some health challenges just to remind you it's never your strength. Amen. That's why the Lord allows some irritating disturbances in our plans just to remind you you will never have spiritual delight while using your strength. Like a battery, your strength expired already many years ago. And the one that you are using now is not yours but the Lord. It helps if you acknowledge that. Amen. It really brings joy if you say, Lord, today you are my strength. My confidence is in you. See, some of you comes to the church and you take the stairs and a lot of elderly would do that and they would say, Kaya pa! Kumam, my elevator. Kaya pa, pastor! Kaya pa. So first step, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Pag last step na, Mario Sepp. <laughs> Ay, nako. Dili na lagi kaya. So I am saying, you want to lose your joy? Trust your strength. 
of God. But you want to find your joy? Use His strength. Amen. Use His strength and He supplies it. There's a second. Don't allow joy stealers to rob you of your spiritual delight. There are people you don't need to have coffee with. I hope you know them. There are people you don't even invite for dinner because they are joy stealers. Don't make them ninongs, ninangs of your son. Don't let them come in into the privacy of your world because they will zap all the joy that you have. And may God give you discernment. What I'm saying is there are people who cannot stand when you are happy. They will always say something like this and like that. So for example, you prayed for it, you saved money for it, you want to go to Japan for vacation for the first time, na-anatanan, ready na, the tickets are there, your visas are approved, and you're announcing to your friends who are going to Japan, uh, enjoy. And these joy stealers would come and say, oh, that money should have been given to the missions. Don't have coffee with these people. They are just, how do you deal with them? How do you deal with joy? You know, a, a couple who never had a baby for a long, long time prayed, and finally the, the, the woman is now pregnant. Nagalihina uh, siya. Sa nang lihi sa English? Addicted to mango. Langlihi. No? Uh, one thing, you know, the lihi. No? Wanted some mango plus yogurt and Oreo and hot sauce, something like that. And the husband is going banana, trying to, this is our first baby, and they try to announce. You know, I belong to the old school. I don't understand this generation. Kung mabuntis gani, picture on you, no? I, I see a lot of pictures in the Instagram when you're pregnant. Pa picture them, yung pusod, mugawas ba That's not okay in our time. You don't take picture of pregnant people and put them in Instagram say, oh, Ay, grabe. Pero iba na ang panahon eh, di ba? Uh, maski gamay pa, morag, uh, morag baki. I, ano na sa bundis. I understand your joy. But joy stealers will come and say, Oh, that baby will have hydrocephalus. No, my goodness. Stay away from this joy killer. Oops, that's not the application. The application is this. Don't be a joy killer. Tama ba? You are staying away from others, but unknown to you and unknown to me in behalf of my good and beautiful, noble intention. No one wants to have coffee with you because you are a joy killer. Bago pa lang nag ang coffee shop, ay mahapay jud na, alisod ka yung panahon. Pagsulay na yung mga tawana, no? Anang, bago pa ganing minyo, ay pastor, magbuwag na, three months, basta anay ta. Agrabe naman mga taong ito. Hindi naman lang pwedeng maging masaya doon sa masaya. Pero kana ba yung attitude no? Takod-takod. If your focus is not Jesus, you are unable to rejoice with others. Kanina, I know life is hard. The world is full of jobless people. But I told Andrea, I truly rejoice with you. You are now a nurse. Do not be a joy killer. And then Paul said, stay on guard defending your faith. And Paul said, I do this to safeguard your faith. You know, Paul is concerned. Philippian church knows the joy of the Lord. But if they are not alert, joy killers will come and rub them out of their joy. This is called in many terms. It's called spiritual abuse. It's called being manipulated, not by a cult, but by what you call an evangelical church. And sometimes the perpetrator of this are those people who wear robe like this and preach the Bible, but they have already damaged your heart. So I sound the alarm. Before you trust a pastor, before you trust a church, focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So how did Paul safeguard the faith of the Philippians? He did two things. Number one, by identifying the joy stealers. No names, afraid of libel. But Paul in general said he identified the joy stealer by saying, watch 
out for those dogs. If you are not a Jew, you are not reacting, no? Because we are not Jewish. Read that in Israel. That's another story. If the Jew will hear the word dog, they will fight. Because dog, calling people dogs, is not only an insult, it is the utmost warning, degrading, attacking, talking to this worthlessness of a person. Why did Paul use those words, dogs? Because there's no other way to warn them of the danger of not being alert. Watch out for those dogs. You know, rubbish. Watch out for those people without mercy. You know what I don't like today is you paint the devil as if he is good. Let me tell you something. Satan, mercy is not in the vocabulary of Satan. So don't toy with him. Don't, in Halloween, don't, don't magnify him. Don't, 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 don't flirt with him because he's dangerous. Dogs and Paul with a heart. Now, can you be angry and joyful at the same time? I ask you a question. Pwede ba masuko pero malipayo? You're talking about joy, but this time Paul is so angry. What makes you angry? What makes you happy? Speaks a lot of your character. That's a Chinese saying. But they say, if you want to look at the boiling water, you cannot see your reflection because only still water reflects you. Anger, there is some point that you should be angry. Like when an old man molests a child, you should be angry. Amen? That should be deported and fired and jailed. And then he can have the Bible study he wants in jail. You should be angry. When our young people are abused, when, when, when there is injustice, when you should be angry. If you are not angry with the evil things happening in the world, something is terribly wrong. However, such anger should not be done in your own strength. Because when you are angry, it is always trembling at the edge and verge of sin. In fact, one of the qualifications of deacons in the Bible is they should not be men of rage. Now, our Southern Baptists failed to elect that because in the latest convention, we saw angry people who forget Christ. Am I angry? I should be angry when the gospel is adulterated. Amen. We should be angry when the truth is no longer preached. So Paul is angry. And then he tells them, who, who is he angry to? He said, those people, maybe he had names, who do evil. And then listen to me, evil in this context, it's not rape, it's not slaughter, it's not massacre. Those are the evil of the world. This evil is more evil than rape, than massacre, than slaughter. What kind of evil? The evil of leading people away from Christ by adding something. That's the evil. What Paul is saying, Christ is enough. Don't add to it. And then people add to it. And people believe him. Them. And then they lost their joy. In particular, they are called the Judaizers. They are Jewish converts becoming Christians. But they have wrong teaching. Maybe uh, not Christians at all. This is their doctrine. Believe in Jesus plus circumcision. Believe in Jesus plus Obey the Ten Commandments. And Paul said, watch out for these dogs. Watch out for these dogs. Now, I'm a dog lover. And I will give you a tip. The, the smaller the dog, the biter. Are you with me? The cuter the dog should be a suspect. The bigger the dog, you won't dare touch. You know, I have my big Rottweiler, Ezra, with a priestly name. So I walk Ezra, and then I say, but who bites you? Chihuahua, who bites you? Mini pincher, who bites you? Uh, Shih Tzu, who, who bites you? You can gagmay nga ero nga mga budlat ug mata. You can murag wak-wak na mantianak, mananggal nga maon na. The last time one of you was bitten by a dog, 
I want to assume it was not a, a big dog. It was a cute dog. Kitty, 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 kitty. So, in the same manner, the danger of this are not the big cults. It's those ones who discipled you. It's those ones who led you to Christ and then put you in their cage. It's those ones, pastors like me, whom you so admired and you have been duped, you are no longer focused on Christ. And by the way, if you come to church and you are interested only in who is the speaker, you're not focusing on Christ. And I rebuke you. Right? Now, here's the point. Identify the joy killers by the standard of truth and by scriptures. Therefore, it is of utmost importance that you need to know Jesus Christ, not through your dreams, not through your imaginations, but through the Holy Scripture. Amen. I hope the young people of today, uh, you still take time to read the Bible, not as an assignment, but as a love letter that you might know the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope the elderly, before the eyes grow dim and the senses fade, loves the Word. And if you know the truth, you detect the wrong. That's the arrangement. No? Those people who work in the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, how do you train them so they will not be deceived? You know how they are trained? They are trained to focus on the real money, how it, the smell of it, the texture of it, everything, so that when they see what is fake, they can easily detect because they know what is true. All God's people say. Karun, so, you know, I grew up in a Baptist church where Everybody, everyone who stands in the pulpit is respected, but is always a suspect. Preach to us, but we will check what you're teaching. That should be your attitude. Amen. It's not that Pastor Tan says, Pastor Tan says, that's dangerous. What God said is more important. Amen. Joy stealers, identify them by the standard of Christ, because the life of Christ exposes joy stealers. Amen. Look at Jesus and look at these preachers. If there is any inconsistency, stay away. They will steal your joy. Amen. My only complaint. I, my uncle brought me to the Lord. He is a Bible Baptist pastor. And I, I am forever thankful he brought me to the Lord. But the Baptist church brought me to the cage. That's the problem. Jesus set people free. But if you are not careful, religion in general will put you to prison and get your joy. How do they do that? By adding more. Like if you did not go to church, you cannot be a Christian. I'll talk about that later. So my challenge to you is don't dilute the gospel by adding your rules. Not God's rule. Your role. Diba? Ako pastor, di ko mukhaon o dinuguan. Ay, ako mukhaon yun. Napay puto. Ano ba? Dili. Not your role, but God's role. Now, it will help you if you, in your mind, you should have two boxes. One, God's role. And the other one, religion's role. This one takes seriously. This one, you can ignore it. Are you with me? Like evangelism. Share the gospel. Oh, I, I've shared the gospel since... Um, have you ever heard of the 7,000 spiritual laws? But as I have shared the gospel, I notice one thing. The joy is gone and the pressure is high. The pressure is high. Especially when older Christians would say, how many souls you won today? Jesus is not asking that. Religion will ask. You know, in the Bible school where I finish... Uh, my theological training in the subject evangelism, uh, we were required, not my time, former graduates, salamat na lang sa mua, si Sir Kuding, my, my director is a man of grace, but before him, students are required to bring souls or else you will not graduate. So, ato silang cementerio. Kung kapi-kapi dito mga pangalan, ah, soul na yun ni, oy, perting kalaga, ane. So they went to the 
Dean, submitted the names. Uh, mga kalag ba ni? Ma'am, for sure. Kalag ka, yun na. Gika na sa wireless. I mean, if you do evangelism, high pressure, counting numbers, and guilt trip, you miss Christ. You miss Christ. And stop supporting groups like that. You miss Christ. You see? You miss Christ. I, I am not against you preaching the gospel. I'm against you disrespecting other people. That is not right. Until they allow you, until they're willing to listen, then open your mouth. Some of you open your mouth first and the gospel is destroyed. And I grew up in the Baptist idea that their blood will be on your hand. Well, there is truth in that, but if you are being rude, you just destroyed the possibility of them knowing Christ. Are you with me? Now, identify the joy stealers by the lifestyle they live. Wow, I have two words for you. Watch out for one word, very dangerous, legalism. Legalism is obeying man's rule and make it look like it's God's rule and making other people guilty if they, if they don't obey it. That's legalism. I'll give you an example. Bring your Bible to church. Is it good or not? I grew up in Emmanuel. Dako kayong Bible. In fact, the bigger the Bible, the better. The book of life, the mundalon. I mean, we have Bibles here, and ah, we go to church, and uh, Lolo Silbor will check. Now, Bibles brought, Bibles stolen, Bible. We bring our Bible. So today, if I ask you, if you are a true Christian, bring your Bible. That's legalism. You know what the Word of God said? Hide it in your heart, not show it before men. Other people, it's not good sa Kuan, kaning cell phone ang Bible. You see, technologies change, but legalist people will always say it should always be God's way. What they mean, it should always be the way I preferred. Learn to say no. Learn to tell them that's yours and not mine. And here we go. The stricter the church, the suspect they should be. A lot of church so strict. Kana magmanimba bitaw mo kamo mga babae nga wala mo nagpalda. Nakapantalon na sila ay ukay-ukay. Ipa-change yun. Magpalda, magpalda. That's legalism. I've been there once. May mga, Pastor, kanang, pwede ba may magpantalon? Mas maayaw na yung pantalon. Mas delikadong wala. <laughs> diba? But you know what? A lot of you also come to church. Sobra naman. Musimba, nana mo yung mga sanina nga chubles. Anong ngilad na kayo ba? Di naman na spaghetti. Luglug na yan. So, siksi kayo mo simba. Masaman. You know, I, I, I saw a church. <laughs> it will not happen here. Nasa gawas, dress code. The size of the uh, unsa ni? Palda. Nagani, dali 60 years old, nag miniskirt pa. Mahimaya, good Christo, ana, no? Sige lang, pasag din na, eh, hapit mo na kwaon ni Jesus. Pasag din na, kung sayang gusto. Ay, matigwa nga pasaway, no? Kalang, uh, ang dagway, muradyog, eh, anyway, iyaha mo lang. Ah, nagawas na akong legalism ba? Ay, nako. But others comes in short, other come, there's no problem because God looks in the heart. Amen? But, uh, you know, I told the pastors, because sometimes we see you really in your, in your, uh, what, do, what, what do we do? We, oh, no, 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 I tell our pastors, when you see them like that in church, look to Jesus. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. If you cannot, iham yang lawas, Disiplina ay mong mata. Pero look to Jesus. So, you know what I'm saying? The church is not a place where you are judged by what you wear, but I'm sure you know you should be also responsible by what you do. No? I am not going to go to the other extreme. Word is what? Legalism. Can you say that? Magbantay mo, Ana. It can be a Baptist church or how'd kaayo. I have list here, ha? Huh? Sa to akong lista. 
It can be a campus ministry, legalism. You know, legalists never smile. They never smile. And it could be a discipleship program. Like a pastora would say, magsweldo ganin, anas pastora, magsweldo na, magsweldo na ang inyong tight. Stay away from churches like that. That's legalism. Amen? There are churches who teach you have to give your first fruit. You know what is first fruit? Your first salary goes to the pastor. Oh, that's nice. Your first salary goes to me. Lord, have mercy. I will have my house in North Town. Na. That's wrong. Your money goes to God. Whenever you want to give to others, do so without being pressured. Amen. What about the second fruit? Now my first. No, and I'm saying magbantay mo. Legalism. You know the second word? Humanism. What is humanism? Humanism is this. If you're happy, go there. Let your heart guide you. Dangerous. Because many times our hearts are not right with God. It cannot guide you unless it is governed by Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever advised that to someone? Kung saan ka masaya, doon ka. If you're happy with that, go there. No, 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 sir. Dallas Willard explains it so well. Your desire is not going to define what is godly. Godly should define your desire. Amen. I don't like my wife. God, I, I, Masaya, I, I'm not happy with you anymore. I'm not going to have an affair because I'm happy with this one. That is what I'm saying wrong. There's no joy there. Believe me. Believe me. By exposing, identifying the joy stealer by their lifestyle. Watch out for three lifestyle of joy killers. Joy stealers, number one, a lifestyle based on rigidity. Rigidity. I am not saying discipline. We need discipline, but rigidity is another story. Rigidity is beyond reason, no time to laugh, no time to be flexible. This is it, and it always be it. That's dangerous. There's no joy there. Number two, watch out for the lifestyle void of freedom in Christ. Set my people free. Claro ba sa inyo, there is a chai bap? The Lord decides for you, not your pastor. All God's people say. You don't need my opinion in everything. If you need my advice, I will give that to you. But that is under the category of advice. You can reject it if you don't want. When pastors substitute the fear of God, joy stealers abound. There's a third. A life, this one I think many of us should repent. A life of perfectionism is joy stealer. A lot of kids graduated today with honor, valedictorian, most behaved, most beautiful, most pretty, most powerful, most... But they go to the stage while I, while I smile. All the parents are happy. Something wrong. They may give you your medal, but you will never have their time and their heart because perfectionism is evil. No one is perfect, including you. Do not live by that standard. There are jobs that require to be excellent, but not perfect. Like a surgeon should be meticulous because mabilin pa lang ng chill you. I'm not perfect. No, there are jobs that, that, that demands excellence, but perfectionism is not about that. Perfectionism is a spiritual, physical, psychological disorder that Shoes people away. And if you are between the age of 60 and up to 70, 70 is the quota. Bible says life is up to 70. After that, bonus, that age, if you still have time, repent from your perfectionism so that the remaining days of your life will be a source of joy. Amen. May mga tigo lang, nakamatay yun na, kung perfectionist, ang istorya sa mga anak, dugay ang matay, uy. Mura mo, nagnaluoy sila, naghilak-hilak. Ay, they love their parents. No, naghilak, dugay ang matay, uy. If you are a perfectionist, your children will visit you, but only five minutes and they live according to your demands. 
I struggled that myself. Because being a former legalist, recovering fundamentalist, it's perfectionism. Cannot tolerate mistakes. But today, if you want back your joy back, repent of that. And in the name of Jesus, loosen up. Do not be uptight. Laugh loud. I mean, I don't know how to describe. I'm not going to say wild. I'm going to say stop the hypocrisy. Receive the joy of the Lord and express that with all your energy. Last, by exposing their lies. What is the lie? Those mutilators who say you must be circumcised to be saved. That's the lie. Can you detect the lie? Another strong word, mutilators. Paul is saying, Paul is angry. Paul is angry. Paul is really fuming angry, but yet love and grace telling the Philippian church, Christ saves you. But believe in Christ enough. Not believe in Christ plus baptism equals Christianity. Not believe in Christ plus tithes and offering. Not believe in Christ and attend 12 sessions of discipleship. Believe in Christ and don't be absent in prayer meeting. Paul is saying, no! Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And that's it. What about repentance? Well, I have something to say about that. You are not saved by your repentance. You are saved because God accepted your repentance. Are you with me? Even if you repent and God has said, I don't care, nada. You can repent. You should repent because God said, I will accept your repentance. When I say believe, some people attack and they say, easy believism. I, I go with my mentor, Chuck Swindoll. What is hard believism? You know, easy believism are, are, are carnal terms. And the truth is this. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. By faith in Christ, you become a child of God. Amen. No more additives. No more by faith. Be a member. By faith, donate something. By faith, memorize the doctrines of the Anastasian Creed. By, 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 by faith, blah, blah. These are all good. Tinood, that there's our discipleship is wonderful. These are all good. But they are not the means to salvation. Only by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friend, have you been deceived? Be alert to differentiate what grace is and what rigid rules are. Three statements more and we're going to have communion. I hope I can end happy because I am infected by the anger of Paul, of the legalism. I try, I try my best to be happy. I want you to partake communion with joy. Amen? I don't want you to partake communion this morning with like a criminal case. This is your last meal. No. Partake communion and say, Buutan kay si Cristo. Daghan kay kong atraso. Gipasaylo ko niya. Amen. That's the way to partake communion. You know, my family vomited me. My religion rejected me. Here's Christ accepting you. Partake communion today. Amen? And that's the way we partake. Because it's all about grace. Number one, grace so that no one can boast. That's it. If you are boasting, it's not grace. The moment you mention the word grace, stop parading your performance. Oh, by the grace of God lang, ha? Naning kamot yun ko, anak, pastor. Look at my achievement. By the grace of God lang, ha? Sagpa! Ang sama na, oy? Grace of God, period. If possible, you have no more appetite to parade what you have achieved. Amen? You know, folks, if you come to the point in your life that you don't want to be recognized, you have experienced loaded spiritual delight. I'm not talking about insecurity. I'm talking about self addiction. Grace so that no one can boast. There's a second word. Grace so that no one can freely continue to sin. A lot of people say, it's grace, preacher. I can choose the sex I want. It's grace. I, I, I don't like my wife. I will remarry this one. It's, it's grace. I can... No, sir. The grace of God is not designed to make you sin to your full the grace of God is to equip you to do what is pleasing to Jesus. All God's people say. So by the grace of God, 
I will stop this illegal business. Amen. By the grace of God, though it's painful, we've been living together for 12, 20 years, but this relationship is not right. We have to separate. That's not because I told you. That's because the Spirit of God convicted you. There's a difference. You know, the pastor can bully you to transformation. That's wrong. Only the Holy Spirit can convict you. By the grace of God, and then finally, the tall order for all of us, grace that no one can enslave another. Now, listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. Whether you like it or not, there is someone crazy who is so loyal to you. There is someone in this planet Earth so crazy who is loyal to you. Magpakamatay gina sa imo. I remember my pastor, Pastor Misa, he said, if you are a pastor, he say, let's go to heaven. Nadyo mo upos. Langit na naham, upos pa. Napoy ngon, let's go to hell. Napoy mo uban. So, there are people, right and wrong, they are loyal to you. Can you please, before you partake communion, ask the Holy Spirit, there are people you should set free because they are already enslaved by you and you are aware or not aware, it's time for them to be human again, to have dignity again, to have freedom again, to think about themselves. Maybe they are drivers, they are helpers, they are staff in the church because of their effective giftedness. Ginatawag naman sa ginoo sa US, ginatawag naman siya sa ginoo sa abroad. Oy, dili ni para sa mga taga ha? Laruhon. Dirijud mo forever. May lisod ka. No, para naastanan. The Lord is already calling them in a different world. You have no right to say stay. Set people free. And that's grace. I'll put flesh on that. Be free from people who abuse you. Don't allow them anymore. All God's people say. Number two. Be free from the system that allows that abuse. So are you into a discipleship? Are you into a group called this and called that? I almost mentioned the name. Uh, start with letter. Yeah, are you in a group? You know, there are very fundamental Baptists who are enslavers. Be careful. Be careful. Some of you are spiritually damaged. And we apologize. Perhaps one way or the other, Chinese Baptist Church, because I'm a former legalist, recovering fundamentalist, must have committed that mistake. Today, I pray to God, stay away from people who enslave you. There's one more. Do not enslave others under your control. All God's people say, Amen. Your helper for 14 years now wants to have a sari-sari store of her own. She wants to be free, but she's so effective. So you don't even say, I will double, triple your salary, stay with me. No, let her go. Are you with me? And for parents, this is very painful. We did not raise children so that they can take care of us when we are old. We raise children so they can be what God wants them to be. Amen. And for pastors, if time comes of retirement, it's humbling to say there's another young person who will take your place. But for me in this church, no one can take my place. No, no, no. David can. Dr. Molato is so capable. Dr. Fritz, take your pick. But I know you want me. Apit mo good mo retire no kadlok ba ana magsipasipan ako glata di as chongko anyway retirement is real it will come and when it comes release so let me end my sermon with verses and we will read that okay ay salamat lord read it with me galatians 3:10 to 11 here we go 1 2 3 but those who depend on the law to make them right with god are under his curse. Agui. For the scripture says, curse is everyone who does not observe and obey all the commands that are written in God's book of the law. What, what Paul is saying, if you want to obey the, the commandments, obey all. Not only your favorite. No one can obey all. That's the message. Keep reading. I love that. So it is clear 
No one. Who is included in the no one? All of us. No one. Pope Francis, Billy Graham, alabaw na si Kuan. No one. No one. Discipler and pastors and no one can make it right with God by trying to keep the rules. No one. For scripture say, hallelujah. It is righteous person has la- faith in whom? In Christ. I'm glad you know. Not faith in pastors, not faith in systems, not faith in discipleship, not even faith in doctrines. I believe in doctrines, but doctrines did not save you. Christ did. Amen? As if doctrines were crucified for you. No, Christ saved you. I believe in repentance, but repentance did not save me. Repentance was effective because God accepted it through Christ. That's the way to be a Christian. Hallelujah. By faith in Jesus, you, my friend, are free. And therefore, live free in Christ. One more verse. If this excites you, this one will. Romans chapter 3, 20 to 22. Read it all together. For no one can be made right with God by doing what the law, comma, no one. The law, ay, yeah, yun pala eh. What is the use of the law? It simply shows how sinful we all are. That's the purpose of the law. Keep reading. But now, God has shown us the way to be made right with Him without keeping the requirements of the law. As promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. I love that. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. All God's people say, Amen. You are made right by, by becoming a Baptist. No, no. By putting your faith in Christ. You partake communion today because you know in your heart you have Christ. Can I sing a song? Okay lang. Hmm. I want to sing this. Practice naman po namo ni ni Charlie o ni because this is my childhood song, the first mm, the first taste of salvation, freedom in Christ. Nawala lang katong na baptist nako. Ay katong na legalis ako. Pero that is coming back now. The first song taught to me by Mrs. Gonzaga of Bible Christian Independent uh, Church. Oh, sige, cha. This is salvation. This is... Thank you, Lord. Here we go. And I'm so happy and here's the reason why Jesus took my burdens all the way. And now I'm singing as the days go by Jesus took my burdens all the way. Once my heart was heavy with the load of sin Jesus took the load and gave me And now I'm singing As the days go by Jesus took my burdens all the way Please all rise I'm so happy Is the reason why Jesus took my burdens all the way Now I'm singing As the days go by Jesus took my burdens all the way And once my heart was heavy with the load of sin Jesus took the load and gave Now I'm singing as the days go by Jesus took my burdens all the way Hallelujah Joyfully take the bread let us all have communion with joy in our hearts, not as criminal sentence, but sinners forgiven. In the night the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. And let's all together break the bread and broke it and said, This is my body. Eat ye all of it in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, as I eat this bread, as we eat this bread, I hope we have said, because I have said, I hope all of us have come to the point in our lives that we say, 
Lord, no more fighting. I believe. I repent. I trust you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, convict us of sin. Holy Spirit, lead us to the Savior. Holy Spirit, help us say yes. Lord, we're saying yes. Yes to Jesus. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. And as we eat this bread, we remember you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us eat this bread in remembrance of Jesus. The Lord took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink ye all of it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, please remind me as I drink this cup, I no longer belong to myself. I willingly, I willingly, without being pressured, I willingly, filled with the Spirit, decide I'm yours forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's drink this in remembrance of our Lord. Amen. We will sing a solemn song entitled, Knowing You, Jesus. Now, here's my deal with you. If the Lord convicts you to come to the altar, come. Month of June, why are you coming to the altar? You're saying, Lord, in this month of June, help me focus on Jesus. Help me focus on Jesus. Come and pray and may God meet us. And Kate will lead us in this closing song. It's a beautiful song. Knowing you, Lord Jesus. As the song begins, you can kneel down, get a kneeling pad. And when you come to the altar, you're saying, Thank you for the joy. Help me focus on you, Lord.
close in prayer. After the prayer, we will sing the second stanza. It's a good reminder how to live the month of June. Now my heart's desire, amen, is to know you more. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for refocusing. We love health. We're happy if there's wealth. We're happy if there's happy family, good life, beautiful church, wonderful walk with you. All of these are blessings from you, but never the source of true joy. Only Jesus is the source, standard and sustainer. And therefore, Father, while we are very, very thankful for kids, loved ones, friends, blessings, promotion, passing the board, healing from cancer, and a lot of this, mapasalamat on yud kay migino. But Lord, we put them in one box, supplements, the source of joy, my source of hope, my source of life is Christ alone. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us respond my desire now, my heart's desire. Now my heart's desire is to words, I love you, Lord. He tells you, I love you first and I love you more. Lift up your hands joyfully. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord. Hear our prayers. It's impossible that we know each other, but it's not difficult to smile and say, happy that you're here to inspire others. Would you do that? Amen. Happy you're all here, balcony. Happy you're all here, down here. God bless you. Our service ends here. The pastors are in front. If you need prayers, please come to them. If you have some offerings, you can drop them at any box without being pressured.